Hi, in this video we're going to try and perform a case sensitive filter in Excel. Now you're probably looking at this video because you found out that filters are not case sensitive. Uh, let's just prove that point. I'm going to apply filters to this database. Click in any single cell, go to the data tab on my ribbon, click on the filter button. So uh, let's say I wanted to filter for this particular product code YU PUT4264 but I only want the one with all caps not the one with a mixed case such as these ones here but if I go to my drop down menu button to filter you can see that actually it only lists the one with mixed case doesn't list the one with full caps so that's the only one I can choose so let's just filter on that value and what it actually does is return both versions of the product code. So it's clearly not working. Filters are not case sensitive. So how do I resolve this problem? Well, I'm going to show you first of all using a normal filter, which is what we're doing here with these drop down menu buttons, and then show you how to do the same thing with an advanced filter. And you can decide which method you prefer. So first method would be to create an additional column in your database with this is your column heading. So this, your criteria is your column heading in your new column. Now I'm just going to copy over the formatting from this column to this column. So I can do that by just selecting this. Go to my Format Painter and then just paint over those cells. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use something called the exact function. And the exact function, if you've never used it before, checks whether two text strings are exactly the same. It returns true if they are and false if they're not. And exact, very usefully, is case sensitive. So here we go. What I want to do is I want to compare this value, comma, with this value to see if it's exactly the same. Close the bracket. Now what I will need to do is fix my reference to C2 because as you probably know, if you copy formula down, the numbers in your cell references change and I wouldn't want that to happen for C2 because I've got to compare all of these with this value here. So what I've done is clicked into the C2 reference and I'm pressing F4 key on my keyboard. That puts a dollar before the C and the 2. That would work fine. Technically, though, you only need to fix the row when you're copying down. So I pressed F4 again and it put a dollar just before the 2. That will also work. So if I now copy that down, you can see it returns true and false for the results of the formula. So what I can do is if I reapply my filter, so it includes the new column, so data filter filter, and I can just say, well, only show me results, only show me records where the result is true in this new column. Now, if I clear that and I wanted to do something slightly different, say I wanted to do it for the mixed version of it, I would just copy that paste it into here and rerun the filter and then it works for me fine. So that's how you perform a case sensitive filter using a normal filter with these drop down menu buttons. The next part of the video looks at the advanced filter and how we might do the same thing but using a slightly different method. So here we are, I'm on the advanced filter sheet, if you're following this along with the example file. Um, I've got the same scenario, I've got the same database, and I want to filter for this product code in this case. So there's a slight difference in the layout for this example. What I've done is I've inserted a little bit of space, a few empty rows above my database just enough room to specify my criteria in a separate table. What you want to make sure though is that there is at least one row, one blank row between this little criteria table and your database. Okay, so that being the case, this is what you would do. Um, you'll notice that I've got uh, an empty row also above my criteria. Okay, so you're going to need that as well. Um, I've got my criteria in A2, and then what I'm going to do in B2 is write the exact function. So this is 
almost the same as the last example we looked at, except that I'm not going to write the exact function in the actual database. I'm going to write it within a little criteria table. So what I'd do is I'd say equals exact. And I want to compare this value, which I'm going to fix, comma. And I did that with the F4 key. You probably saw that as a little uh, screen label that came up, but it's the F4 key that will fix. And I want to compare it with this the first row. No, sorry. This the first product code within my database. So I close the bracket. So for this to work with the advanced filter, the reference to your first row within the formula must be a relative reference and all other references must be fixed. Okay, now if I press enter, it returns false because obviously that doesn't equal that. Okay, now I've got my formula. The formula that I use with the advanced filter must return true or false, which this one obviously does. But you could use other types of formula in this scenario as well, but we're just focusing in on case sensitive filters and this exact function returns true or false. That's what you need if you're going to use a formula as part of your advanced criteria. Okay, so let's run our advanced filter. To do that, you click in a single cell within your database. You go to the data tab on your ribbon and you go to the advanced button. Now, the list range, which is your database, should automatically be selected. If not, you'll need to select it, including the column headings within your database. Criteria range will be the cell with your formula in plus the cell above it. Now, the cell above it must be empty or contain a value or a label that is not the same as any of the labels within your database. Generally, it's easier just to leave it blank. Okay. Now, if I click on OK, you can see it now filters the result based on this criteria. What it essentially has done is produced in memory the same formula that we produced back here in the filter example, the normal filter, filter example. We don't have to have that column when we're using an advanced filter, but essentially that's what it's done in memory. It's gone through each row and worked out whether the answer is true or false. And when we have run the advanced filter, it's only returned the records that have a true result um, for this formula. Okay, let's clear the filter. The other thing you can do with an advanced filter is actually leave the main database intact and copy the results to another location. So let's see how that's done. So again, I click in any single cell within the database. I go to advanced. My criteria range is the same. But what I'm going to do is say copy to another location, copy to, and then all I need to do is select a single cell to copy to. Click on OK. And there we are, there are my results, leaving the original database intact. Let's just get rid of those results. Now, the other thing you can do with an advanced criteria, uh, advanced filter is specify criteria in more than one column. So say I wanted these results, but only where the quantity was, say, above 5,000. Now, what I would do is I would copy this column heading and place it up in my criteria area. So because I want to add a criteria for quantity, I will need the column heading for quantity within my criteria table. This formula didn't need a column heading, but when you're specifying normal criteria within an advanced filter, you do need the column heading. And it must be exactly the same as the column heading within your database. Even a space after this, if I put a space there, would mean that the filter would fail. It's got to be exactly the same, which is why I copied it. And what I can do is just type in my criteria. So let's say greater than 5,000. Let's apply a little bit of formatting. Okay, so let's run the criteria for this particular filter. So again, I click into the database. I go to the data tab, I go to advanced, 
Now the criteria range this time will be slightly different. It will include column B criteria, so the empty cell in my formula, plus this extra column of criteria, which includes the column heading and the criteria for that column. I'm going to copy the results to another location. So let's say there, click on OK, and this time I only got two results. The third result was below the greater than 5,000 for this product code. Okay, so that's how to perform a case sensitive filter using normal filters where you have to create an additional column or advanced filter where it basically creates that column of formulas in memory, which means you avoid having to have an extra column in your database, which sometimes might be useful.